Kuttik Kathaka is the Hindi name for one of the eight major forms of Indian classical dance. The origin of Kuttik is traditionally attributed to the traveling bards of ancient northern India known as Kathakars or storytellers. The term Kuttik is derived from the Vedic Sanskrit word Katha which means story and Kathaka which means the one who tells a story or to do with stories. Wandering Kathakars communicated stories from the great epics and ancient mythology through dance, songs and music in a manner similar to early Greek theatre. Kuttik dancers tell various stories through their hand movements and footwork, but most importantly through their facial expressions. Kuttik evolved during the Bhakti movement, particularly by incorporating the childhood and stories of the Hindu god Krishna, as well as independently in the courts of North Indian kingdoms. Kuttik is found in three distinct forms, called Garanas, named after the cities where the Kuttik dance tradition evolved, Jaipur, Banaras, and Lucknow. While the Jaipur Garana focuses more on the foot movements, the Banaras and Lucknow Garanas focus more on facial expressions and graceful hand movements. Stylistically, the Kuttik dance form emphasizes rhythmic foot movements, adorned with small bells and the movement harmonized to the music. The legs and torso are generally straight, and the story is told through a developed vocabulary based on the gestures of arms and upper body movement, facial expressions, stage movements, bends and turns. The main focus of the dance becomes the eyes and the foot movements. The eyes work as a medium of communication of the story the dancer is trying to communicate. With the eyebrows the dancer gives various facial expressions. The difference between the sub-traditions is the relative emphasis between acting versus footwork, with Lucknow style emphasizing acting and Jaipur style famed for its spectacular footwork. Kuttik as a performance art survived and thrived as an oral tradition, learned and innovated from one generation to another verbally and through practice. It transitioned, adapted and integrated the tastes of the Mughal courts in the 16th and 17th century particularly Akbar, was ridiculed and declined in the colonial British era, then was reborn as India gained independence and sought to rediscover its ancient roots and a sense of national identity through the arts. <laughs> <laughs> Etymology and nomenclature The term Kuttik is rooted in the Vedic term Katha Sanskrit, Katha which means story, conversation, traditional tale. Kuttik refers to one of the major classical dance form primarily found in northern India, with a historical influence similar to Bharatanatyam in South India, Odyssey in East India and other major classical dances found in South Asia. It differs from the numerous folk dance forms found in North and other parts of the Indian subcontinent. The Kuttik dancers, in the ancient India, were traveling bards and were known as Kathakas, or Kathakar. Kuttik has inspired simplified regional variants, such as the Bhavai, a form of rural theatre focusing on the tales of Hindu goddesses, Shakti, and one which emerged in the medieval era, is presently found in Gujarat, Rajasthan, and Madhya Pradesh. Another variant that emerged from ancient Kuttik is Thumri. History According to Mary Snodgrass, the Kuttik tradition of India is traceable to 400 BCE. The earliest surviving text with Kuttik roots is the Natya Shastra, attributed to sage Bharata, and its first complete compilation is dated to between 200 BCE and 200 CE, but estimates vary between 500 BCE and 500 CE. The most studied version of the Natya Shastra text consists of about 6,000 verses structured into 36 chapters. The text, states Natalia Lidova, describes the theory of Tandava dance Shiva, the theory of rasa, of bhava, expression, gestures, acting techniques, basic steps, standing postures, all of which are part of Indian classical dances including Kuttik. Dance and performance arts, states this ancient Hindu text, are a form of expression of spiritual ideas, virtues, and the essence of scriptures. The 2nd century BC panels found in Bahut show the dancers in a vertical stance with their arms positions already suggesting today's Kuttik movements. Most of the dancers have one arm near the ear in a pataka asta mudra. In subsequent years, the asta was lowered to the bust level. The term kathakas in the sense of storytellers appears in ancient Hindu texts, such as the Mahabharata. Bards, actors, dancers, songsters and musical reciters of legends and stories are mentioned hundreds of times in the Hindu epics. Topic. 
Topic: Bhakti movement era. Textual studies suggest that Kuttik as a classical dance form likely started in Banes Varanasi and from there migrated northwest to Lucknow, Jaipur and other parts of north and northwest India. The Lucknow tradition of Kuttik dance attributes the style to a Bhakti movement devotee named Ishwari from the Handia village in Allahabad, Uttar Pradesh, who credited Hindu god Krishna appearing in his dream and asking him to develop dance as a form of worship. Ishwari taught his descendants, who in turn preserved the learning and developments through an oral tradition over six generations ultimately yielding the Lucknow version of the Kuttik dance, a family tree that is acknowledged in both Hindu and Muslim music-related Indian literature. The evolution in Kuttik dance theme during the Bhakti movement centered primarily around Divine Krishna, his lover Radha and milkmaids copies around legends and texts such as the Bhagavata Purana found in the Vaishnavism tradition of Hinduism. The love between Radha and Krishna became symbolism for the love between Atman soul within and the Supreme Source cosmic soul everywhere, a theme that dance ballet and mimetic plays of Kuttik artists expressed. <laughs> <laughs> Mughal era The Mughal era courts and nobles accepted Kuttik as a form of aristocratic entertainment, which low-income families were willing to provide. However, the dance became more abstract and erotic, less as a means of communication of spiritual or religious ideas, and in cases the dance is innovated by emphasizing the eroticism and sexuality the Muslim audience wanted while keeping the message such as those of Krishna Radha embedded in the dance. According to D.R.I.D. Williams, It should be remembered that the first Kuttik dances were, after all, Hindus who danced for Mughal overlords. Too much outward expression of religious belief was without doubt undesirable. It is therefore reasonable to assume that the wide use of abstract dancing, intricate bell work, takkar, dazzling turns and the fleeting, transient, glimpses of Radha and Krishna in Kuttik arose both to remind the dancers about their reasons for dancing and, gently, unobtrusively, to deceive their courtly Mughal audiences. Perhaps Tatkar and Tukras formed the bulk of these first dancers' performances. Gradually more and more images, then stories of Krishna and Radha crept in. Over time, the Kuttik repertoire added Persian and Central Asian themes, such as the whirling of Sufi dance. The costumes replaced saris with items that bared midriff and included a transparent veil of the type common with medieval harem dances. When the colonial European officials began arriving in India, the Kuttik court entertainment they witnessed was a synthesis of the ancient Indian tradition and Central Asian Persian dance form, and the Kuttik dance performers were called the Nauch girls, or Nach, a derivative of the more difficult to pronounce Sanskrit Natya. <laughs> <laughs> British Raj era With the spread of colonial British rule in the 19th century India, Kuttik along with all other classical dance forms were discouraged and it severely declined. This was in part the result of the Victorian morality of sexual repressiveness along with Anglican missionaries who criticised Hinduism. Reverend James Long, for example, proposed that Kuttik dances should forget ancient Indian tales and Hindu legends, and substitute them with European legends and Christian tales. Missionaries recorded their frustration in church missionary review when they saw Hindu audiences applaud and shout, Ram, Ram, during Kuttik performances. The seductive gestures and facial expressions during Kuttik performances in temples and family occasions were caricatured in The Wrongs of Indian Womanhood, published at the start of the 20th century, as evidence of harlots, debased erotic culture, slavery to idols and priests. Tradition, and Christian missionaries demanded that this must be stopped, launching the anti dance movement or anti nouch movement in 1892. Officials and newspapers dehumanized the Kuttik dances, and the sources of patronage were pressured to stop supporting the Kuttik performing nouch girls, also termed as Devadasis and Taurifs in mid 20th century literature. Many accused the dance form as a front for prostitution, while revivalists questioned the constructed histories by the colonial writers. Not only did missionaries and colonial officials ridicule the Kuttik dancers, Indian men who had been educated in colonial Britain and had adapted to Victorian prudery joined the criticism, states Margaret Walker, possibly because they had lost their cultural connection, no longer understood the underlying spiritual themes behind the dance, and assumed this was one of the social ills, immoral, and backward elements. 
in their heritage that they must stamp out. However, the Hindu families continued their private tutoring and kept the Kuttik art alive as an oral tradition. Kuttik teachers also shifted to training boys to preserve the tradition, as most of the 20th century ridicule had been directed at Kuttik. Nouch girls. Kuttik was brought to the attention of audiences outside India in the early 20th century through Kalkaprasad Maharaj. Topic: <laughs> Post-colonial era. The movement to end the colonial era and for an independent India, states Walker, also witnessed a revival of Kuttik and more broadly, a cultural ferment and effort to reclaim culture and rediscover history. The Kuttik revival movements co-developed in Muslim and Hindu Gharanas, particularly by the Kuttik Misra community. Of these the Jaipur and Lucknow sub-traditions of Kuttik have attracted more scholarship. According to a BBC Arts article, Kuttik is unique in being practiced by the Muslim community of the India, and thus has a historical link to Islam. Farah Yasmin Sheikh, a Muslim and a disciple of Pandit Chitresh Das in the Lucknow school, considers Kuttik as a confluence of Hindu and Muslim cultures, and has presented her performance in Pakistan. In contrast, states BBC. Nahid Siddiqui, settled and nurtured in the UK, has a hard time practicing and presenting her Kuttik art in her birth country of Pakistan. While most scholars consider Kuttik as an ancient art, some such as Margaret Walker suggest the modern Kuttik is a 20th century phenomenon, more a form of cultural revival, if one relies on the music related Indian documents. <laughs> Repertoire A modern Kuttik, in all three major sub-traditions called Lucknow, Banaras and Jaipur styles Garana, states Bruno Nettle, consist of three main sections, the invocation, one pure abstract dance recital and one expressive dance, the invocation Vandana consists of the dancer coming to stage and offering respect to his or her guru and the musicians on the stage. If the team is from the Hindu tradition, the dancers combine facial expressions and hand gestures mudra to invoke Hindu gods and goddesses, while a Muslim performance replaces the devotional expressions with a salami salutation. The pure dance is called a enrita, while the expressive dance is called a narichya. A Kuttik performance can be solo, duo or team. In a technical performance, the speed and energy the dancers exchange with the audience increases in multiples, that is the tempo doubles or quadruples. During the performance, one or more of the Kuttik artists may come to the microphone, interact with the audience, explain something, tell an anecdote in a particular language, or rhythmically recite a song. The costumes of the dancer and the facial cosmetics between a Hindu or Muslim Kuttik dance troupe varies. The stage typically is bare with no distracting background, states Williams, with musicians seated on rugs downstage right audiences left, and if it is a Hindu performance there is an image of dancing Shiva Nataraja or a Ganesha on the stages left with flowers and perfumed incense burning. <laughs> Pure dance N. Ritta. The N. Ritter performance starts off with a Thath sequence, which is a slower graceful movement of wrists, neck and eyebrows. Thereafter, the dancer gradually increases speed and energy, while completing a sequence of bull mnemonic syllables in Indian tradition. Each bull has short sections, similar to technical exercises in Western dance traditions, wherein the dancer engages the audience with Tora, Tukra, Pahant, Paran and others stressing footwork, gestures and turns. Each section when completed has a punctuation mark, usually a sharp turn of the head. Each ankle is adorned with small bells gungru, which may have just one bell or hundreds. The dancer's rapid movements and footwork in a enrita is perfectly timed to the musical beats tala and tempos, and the footwork sequences are called takkars. Most of the enrita performance is abstract, fast and rhythmic aspect of kuttik. In a Kuttik N. Ritter, as with all classical Indian dance forms, the viewer is presented with pure movement, wherein the emphasis is the beauty in motion, form, speed, range and pattern. It aims to engage the senses prakriti of the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Expressive dance 
Narichia is slower and expressive aspect of Kutik that attempts to communicate feelings, storyline particularly with spiritual themes in Hindu dance traditions. In a Narichia, the dance expands to include words, musical notes and gestures to articulate a legend or message, it is more than sensory enjoyment, it aims to engage the emotions and mind of the viewer. The expressiveness of Kutik is also found in other classical dances of India. Its roots are found in the Natyashastra text which defines drama in verse 6.10 as that which aesthetically arouses joy in the spectator, through the medium of actor's art of communication, that helps connect and transport the individual into a super-sensual inner state of being. The Natya connects through Abhinaya literally, carrying to the spectators. That is applying body speech mind and scene, wherein asserts Natyashastra, the actors communicate to the audience, through song and music. Drama in this ancient Sanskrit text, thus is an art to engage every aspect of life, in order to glorify and gift a state of joyful consciousness. According to Massey, another important ancient text that has influenced Kutik is the Abhinaya Dharpanam of Nandikshvara tilde 2nd century CE. In Kutik, Abhinaya is in the form of expressive gestures and pantomime set to music that usually outline a legend or the plot of a well-known story. The gestures and facial expressions convey the ras sentiment, emotional taste and bhava mood of the underlying story. In the Hindu texts on dance, the guru and the artist successfully express the spiritual ideas by paying attention to four aspects of a performance, anjik gestures and body language, vachik song, recitation, music and rhythm, ahaya costume, makeup, jewelry, and sattvic artist's mental disposition and emotional connection with the story and audience, wherein the artist's inner and outer state resonates. A Kutik Narichya performance, however grants flexibility to the artists and invites improvisation, and it may not be accompanied with a song or recital about the legend. The stories in Kutik performance generally tend to be about the Hindu god Krishna or in some cases Shiva or Devi, and the stories come from sources such as the Bhagavata Purana, or the Indian epics. This form of expressiveness is also found in Thumri and Persian ghazals. Topic. Costumes The costumes vary among Kutik performers, and are either Hindu or Muslim. The Hindu costume for female dancers has two variations, one is based on a sari, but is worn in a style different from the customary style that goes over the left shoulder. A Kutik artist generally wraps the sari around the waist and it hangs down from the left. A blouse called choli covers the upper body. The artist may wear a scarf called orni in some places. Hair, face, ear, neck, hand, wrist and ankle jewelry, typically of gold, may adorn the artist. A tikka or bindi in the middle of forehead is common. The second variation of a Hindu Kutik dancer uses a long, full, just above the ankle, lightweight skirt usually with embroidered border that helps highlight the dance motion. The skirt is contrasted with a different color choli, and a transparent scarf typically drapes over it and the dancer's head. Jewelry is typically present in the second variation. The Muslim costume for female dancers also uses a skirt, but includes close fitting churidar pajamas and sometimes a long coat covering hands and the upper body. The head has a cover scarf and the jewelry is light. The Hindu costume for male Kutik performers is typically a silk dhoti draped around the waist, then usually covered with a silk scarf tied on top. The upper body may be bare, show the Hindu thread, or be covered with a loose jacket. Kutik male artists also wear jewelry, but often of stones and much simpler than the female artists. Topic: <laughs> Instruments. <laughs> The ensemble of musical instruments vary with any Kutik performer, ranging from 2 to 12 classical Indian instruments or more in versions with synthetic innovations. The most common instruments that go with Kutik are tabla a pair of hand drums that syncs with the dancer's feet rhythms, sarangi or harmonium with manjira hand cymbals that meters the tal cycle, and other instruments to add effect, depth and structure to the expressive stage of a Kutik performance. Topic. Garanas Kutik is a diffuse tradition, of which three Garanas schools are more well known and studied, Jaipur, Banaras and Lucknow. The schools place different relative emphasis between aspects of a Kutik performance such as the acting versus footwork. 
The Lucknow style, for example, emphasizes acting while Jaipur style emphasizes the dance and footwork. Traditionally, the Jaipur Gharana has had a strong spiritual flavor, covering a diverse range of ideas in Vaishnavism and Shaivism. The Jaipur Gharana traces its origins to Banuji, a famed Shiva Tandava dancer who upon visiting Vrindavan was inspired and taught Natvari Narichya. Banuji's grandons Laluji and Kanhuji were similarly inspired by Krishna. They returned to Jaipur, and together they began the Jaipur Gharana of Kutik. The Jaipur style developed under the sponsorship of Rajput rulers, and they favored the Kutik dance with Hindu religious themes. In the modern era, this school has continued their emphasis on dance and footwork with Jai Lal, Janki Prasad, Kundan Lal, Mohan Lal and Nawal Kishore. This school is best known for its systematic innovations in rhythmic dancing, and the use of dance movement to express a story. The Lucknow Gharana of Kutik dance attributes its origins to a rural Krishna devotee named Ishwari from the village in southeast Uttar Pradesh, who aimed to develop Kutik dance as a form of loving devotion to Krishna. This school thrived after the Mughal Empire collapsed, when Kutik artists moved from Delhi to Lucknow under the sponsorship of Ava Nawabs who favoured court dance culture. In the modern era, the Lucknow Gharana style influences the dance school in New Delhi with Shambhu Maharaj, Burju Maharaj and Lachu Maharaj. Kutik choreography there has developed themes beyond Krishna Radha, such as those based on the drama works of Kalidasa's Shiva Parvati and Bhavabhuti's Malati Madhav. This school has also attempted a Hindu-Muslim Kutik fusion style, highlighting the court dances theme. The Banaras Gharana is the third major style, traditionally believed to be the oldest. Its history is unclear. According to Katari, the school started with Janaki Prasad from a village near Bakana who resettled in Varanasi, but one whose ancestors were famed dancers and musicians. Janaki Prasad was a dancer and a Sanskrit scholar, and credited with inventing the bowls of Kutik, which are mnemonic syllables within the language of this classical dance of India. According to Nicole Lehman, modern Kutik dances show, to varying degrees, a fusion of the styles from all three gharanas. Topic. Relationship with other art forms The North Indian Kutik dance differs from the South Indian Bharatanatyam in several ways, even though both have roots in the Hindu text Natya Shastra. Kutik expressions, particularly in Hindu devotional styles, are more introverted and withdrawn, while Bharatanatyam is more extroverted and expansive. Kutik is normally performed in a standing form with legs and torso typically straight, while Bharatanatyam extensively utilizes bent knee form, aramandi, half sitting position that is somewhat similar to demi plie ballet move. Kutik is also different from Kathakali, though both are Indian classical dance traditions of story play, wherein the stories have been traditionally derived from the Hindu epics and the Puranas. Kathakali emerged in the southwestern region of India modern Kerala, and is distinctive in its elaborate codified colorful makeup, masks and costumes. Kathakali traditionally has been troops of predominantly male actor dancers, who dress up as hero, heroines, gods, goddesses, demons, demonesses, priests, animals and daily life characters. Both dance forms employ elaborate footwork, choreography and hand gestures, but Kathakali integrates South Indian martial arts movements such as leaps and jumps. Both dance forms trace their roots to classical Sanskrit texts, but Kathakali has relatively more recent origins, more closely follows the Hasthalik Shanadipika text and began flourishing in the 16th century. While each has a different musical and dance language, both deploy a host of similar traditional Indian musical instruments. According to Miriam Phillips, the Indian Kutik and the Spanish flamenco dance share many visual, rhythmic, and kinesthetic similarities. Topic Gallery. Topic. See also List of Kutik exponents <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>